Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about energy, diversity, globalism, and uh, technology. <laughs> I forgot the fourth one. <laughs> My name is Donna Blanchard. I'm the very proud managing director of Kumu Kuhui Theater. This show is Center Stage, and we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kuhui Theater. I have a special guest for you today. His name is Will Kahele. He is a, uh, an actor, a director, and he is also the office manager at Kumu Kuhua Theater and we have a whole world of theater to talk with you about today but first I need to tell you that we stream all of our shows live on the internet on thinktechhawaii.com and on newstream.tv and spreaker.com every weekday from 1 to 5 if you have missed any of our shows or you want to replay any of them share them with your friends you can find them at thinktechhawaii.com and on YouTube Oh, and if you would ever like to join us uh, in the studio for a live taping, email j at thinktechhawaii.com. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Will Kahele. Hello. Hello, Will. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. Really, I am. It's, um, we work together. We spend a lot of time together. And you have... Uh, you have a history of theater on uh, this island and art on this island that uh, is so broad we cannot go anywhere together without someone recognizing you and talking to you. And I know you're always very humble about it. Oh, you're nodding your head. You're always very humble about it, but it's the fact that you're very recognizable. Uh, you're recognizable as what? Would you like to talk about that? Uh, probably from the posters that are on the post office wall. but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know, uh, I guess just a lot of acting in the theater in Hawaii. And You're the Manny Hooney Waterman. And commercials. <laughs> yeah, that's my claim to fame. I'm the Manny Hooney Waterman. Commercials and film. Commercials, uh, yeah, independent films, yeah. mostly. So let's talk about, uh, let's start off by talking about what you are working on right now, what you've done recently, what you're doing right now. Uh, right now, I'm getting my play together that I've written for uh, hopefully for production uh, for Kumu Kahua Theater in the next couple seasons. Awesome. So you just had a read through of it? I did. Uh, we had a read through last week Sunday or, or the Sunday before yeah. and uh, I think it was received pretty well. I have to meet with um, our playwright teacher our Tammy Baker and the director Reiko Ho, and uh, they're going to give me some notes and how we can move it forward. Give you some feedback on right, that. Right, right, right. So let's talk through that process just a little bit. You, um, there was a class at Kumukuhua for playwrights. Yes. And this, the, la the, the class this past summer was for people who already had a play in the, a script. Who in already the had a play in the works, and it was to bring that play uh, to its first draft and hear it being read by real live actors uh, in, a, in a theater setting, you know, with other people around so, you know, they could hear it too and maybe give their feedback mm -hmm. so that we know where we have to go. Right. Well, now that's interesting. So you had about, uh, I'm going to say, 30 people in the room, 30, 40, plus 30, you've got your 80, actors. No, 30, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And hearing it, this is a place called The Living Room, uh, hearing it read is is one thing that must be a fairly moving experience for you for the first time to really have an audience and it was an audience mostly of your peers but some of those people were patrons from the theater who aren't necessarily you're not on a first right. name basis I think yeah two-thirds of the audience I didn't know yeah. I've never seen before so what's that like uh, scary yeah scary um, yeah it's like you know you're you're putting out your baby for everyone to judge, I guess. And, and I felt myself judging myself. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I have to change that. Uh -huh. uh, well, why does he say that? I have to, you know. And, but in, in your head, you're already making revisions. You know, you're already rewriting and, and uh, epiphanies come up and, mm. yeah. So, so there's a lot of that. I just have to get it on paper. He, and the audience was asked to give feedback that uh, they gave feedback in written form that Correct. Tammy is taking Correct. and she's going to help you digest. Right. 
so he, here's a question that I always feel like you know we don't we don't do this we don't do this to please our audiences we do it I think to to affect to tell a story to uh, um, to let out <laughs> to bring out what is in mm -hmm. and you want to do it in such a way that it reaches an audience but not necessarily pleases them when you you heard your play read and people didn't laugh where you thought they would laugh or they did laugh where you didn't necessarily want them to laugh does that make you say oh the audience is right I need to shift that or I gotta do my job differently uh, I think it was the latter I, I think I have to do my job differently um, it's not necessarily what I think is funny is what the audience thinks is funny and um, and I'm my best audience, but uh, <laughs> like just not. I think you were you're a pretty harsh audience member that yeah. way. But uh, but you know it, it's yeah. So I there were places where uh, the audience didn't laugh, and um, I don't know why they didn't laugh, and I have to go and look at that. And there were, there was a place where the audience cracked up. Mm. I went, oh, that's interesting. That wasn't uh, one of those places that it would have that big in a, a reaction. And. And I want to know why, why they laughed at that. Yeah. And, okay, then you have a couple other layers here. You have, as an actor, you know what it's like to get a script mm -hmm. and dig through it and try to figure out what is the playwright telling me to do right. and think here. And, and you're also a director, so, you know, the show was, the, the reading was directed by Ray Coho. Right. Um, that's a whole nother level of the director takes what that person believes is going on in a script and they they mold the actors to bring that out but they also put their personality on it so you've got a lot of other personalities that were involved in what the audience was perceiving right that i think as an actor and director myself not a playwright i think that feels too far removed from the work for me right and and uh Hearing it explained like that, like how you just did, it, it made me think, yeah, that's, that's why, uh, to me, uh, the play didn't have a, a main focus. It, it was, it was, it was, it's a good ensemble piece because all the actors have, uh, they have, they have good things to dig into uh, in the characters. But as the main character, uh, the, the, the thread doesn't you know, go through the whole play. Huh. And I think that's where it has to be. And I think as a playwright, I have to take him by the hand and go through the play with him. And then react oh. on the outside and, you know, all the other characters come in that way. Okay. Yeah, it's much different than if you were writing a novel. If you were writing a novel, it's just you directly to the reader. Right. And there's nothing else involved. But so you're going to look for ways in your writing to make it undeniable yeah yes what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> just say yes yes it's undeniable it's undeniable for the director for the actors to know that this is the main thread right that right, we're right stringing undeniable <laughs> okay, good. yeah yeah because right now you know just hearing it that they it sound like you know everybody it, it's it was everybody's story it was all the character story you know there there wasn't one main focus to yeah. go through so it should be you know maybe a main character and then all the other subplots around it right but it just seemed like one big stew of a play which yeah which, yes which we see a lot of I just recently watched the movie Love Actually and you oh. watch that and you see all these little vignettes and right. all this this ensemble of people and that's very popular in filmmaking right 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 um, uh, uh, to have all of these little vignettes and they somehow all come together, but there's no standout lead in there. Right, it's but then, well, but then there are uh, those that you identify with or that you want to see succeed or they have more of a, of a meteor storyline, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the guy, the, like, okay, so take Love Actually, you know, the guy who's the sex god of England, <laughs> you know, he says he's only on the wrong continent, so he moves to you know, Wisconsin, yeah. you know, where people, where all the girls will think he's cute because he has a cute British accent. You know, I mean, that's a, 
that's not a strong storyline, but it's it's a cute storyline. But yeah. who are you pulling for in that? You're pulling for, uh, you're pulling for in, in Love Actually. You're you're pulling for, um, uh, oh, what's her name? The one that the one that her husband is fooling around. Oh yeah. Yeah. What know. is her name? Oh. That lady, <laughs> that lady that used to be married to that yes, guy, Alan, Kenneth Branagh. Alan Rickman. Yes. And she, <laughs> she was named. Yeah. Okay. You're She's really English. pulling for her, and yeah. and the, they're also her brother's storyline. Yeah, yeah her brother's storyline. So there's a couple that are. There's like, a couple that are heavy, but still. Yeah. So do you do you have to do that? Do I have to? Do you do have that? to have a main character that the story is about this person? Well, you have to make I, it one. You know, no, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, people. I mean, there are different types of plays, you know, mm -hmm. being written all the time. We just have to get an audience. <laughs> there you go. But we just but, have to train our audiences yeah, to but, like them. But like, for me, in this, the play that I wrote, uh, Eli, I always thought was the central character, you know. But um, I did not write him as such because of all the characters that were around him. Mm -hmm. And so I have to make the audience, I feel, I have to make the audience care about what happens uh, to Eli. You know? More than the others. And that's the More than the character. others, yeah. The and audience cares. Because, yeah, because I, I, at the reading I was like, oh, so what happened to Eli? I don't care as much what happened to Eli as I want to know what happened to the other characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so so there's a whole psychology about how do you get your audience to care about one person or another without being cheap, without right, right. giving without them... Right, right, hitting them over the head and, yeah. you know, care about Because we don't like that. Right, right, right. Um, let's switch gears a little bit here. Let's okay. talk about other th uh, something else currently going on in your life. You, you, are, uh, you are an actor. You've worked in several different theaters, and now you have a gig at Aulani. Oh, yeah. So what's that like? Because it's a completely different theatrical experience. Can it you describe is. the experience of it? Oh my gosh. Bit, please. Uh, I am a character actor at Aleni. Uh, we, I am a storyteller. And uh, I am Uncle Pono. And Pono is um, derived from my Fohoi name, which is Kelly, Noho Pono. And I, but you know, I didn't think that Visitors would remember Uncle Kelly, you know, Pono. So I just kind of squished it to Pono. Uh, we tell stories down at the fire pit. They have a fire pit at Alani. And we tell stories to the visitors and their kids and, you know, whoever's there. And uh, we tell them stories about how the world came to be, especially in Hawaii. And, so you're uh, talking about legends. Legends. And you are, they're gathering around and you are talking to them as though you are you. Or a heightened me, yes. <laughs> from, from the minute you, you, uh, you go on set, which is the property, which is our learning property, we call it the set, uh, you are on. You're on. You are the character. You're, for eight hours, I am Uncle Pono. And if anybody asks me anything, uh, pertaining to my personal life, that personal life means Uncle Pono's life there at Aulani. So it's hard. So you're just making stuff up. You're lying to people. <laughs> no, no, no. We're 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 no. We're we're making their dreams come true. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because they're there. They're visiting Hawaii. They see somebody walking around. In an aloha shirt, slack sandals with a kikepa and a Hawaiian hat with a lei and a ukulele. And you know, that's part of it, right? You see that vision and you go, oh, this is Hawaii, I'm in Hawaii. And, and then he talks to you and, and it's not just a regular Joe, it's somebody with character that, yeah. you know, that you know has been there and has background and he's from the land. And so, yeah. One time, okay. one time after one of my stories, uh, I had left the fire pit and I went off to the side and it was evening and the moon was out and I was looking at the water and I was just strumming on my ukulele and I was playing one of the songs from uh, Star our Starlet Hui show. I wasn't singing because <laughs> that would just drive people away. And <laughs> so I was playing the ukulele and I was having fun and, and after I uh, uh, played my last strum or my last note, there were like 
five ladies <laughs> sitting down on the beach and they all clapped. Aww. They're like, woohoo! And I went, oh my god! I didn't even, I didn't even see them there. You, you just know? are Uncle Pono. Yeah, and I went, oh, thank it. you, <laughs> and I ran away. But <laughs> that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I, that was nice. Um, so, so you know, I, I, you know, you give them a memory to take back from wherever they came from. And, that sort of interactive acting is very different. It's very uh, different. Um, and I always, I've done, uh, I have done interactive acting like that, and I've also done murder mystery stuff uh, in Chicago. I did murder, murder mystery. I always felt like I was lying to people. And there were people after the show, they didn't know that I was part of the show, and you get to know them and talk with them, and then you die, you know, uh, you become uh, part of the story. and. Then after the show, they say, so was anything you told me true? They feel like they've been duped sometimes. No, I don't but think I, so. Maybe not so much I don't think so. because I, I, you're I, I, obviously not, a character. Not so much as duped as I think that you did a really good acting job. Uh. You know, you, you helped them to see the picture. You, there was no doubt in their mind that you were who you said they, you were. Okay. You know, you, you facilitated their fantasy. <laughs> of being there. That's and, awesome. Yeah, and then having the, that, that murder mystery thing, you know. That's how I see it. Yeah, the murder mystery thing wasn't a fantasy, I yeah. hope. All right, we're going to take, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> take a short break. We'll be, be right back. Stay put. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Seidel, CEO of Think Tech. On Thursday, December 11th, we're having our annual reunion party. We call it Think Tech United. It's at the Lania Kea YWCA. Uh, it's for our speakers and hosts and moderators and friends. Uh, please come down. Everybody is invited to be united. We'll see you there. Check our website for details. Aloha. Hi, we're back and we are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. We are coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. I'm talking with the office manager of Kumukuhua Theater, who is also an actor and a director and a playwright mm. and a painter. Uh, yeah. yeah. So let's let's go back now. How did you, when did you get into acting originally? When was the first, how about this? No, let's go back even further than that. When was the first uh, time you saw a live show that? Uh, I was probably in elementary school and it was probably a show um, at the Blaisdell Concert Hall and at that time it was called the Honolulu International Center or the HIC and uh, it was probably done by Honolulu Theater for Youth. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And were you moved by it? I, I suppose I always liked that kind of stuff. You know, I liked watching musicals when I was a kid because it took you to another place. Like, who are these people and why are they dancing and why are they where did the music like come from? <laughs> yeah, how do yeah. they know the, the song so well, you know? Is, when was the first time you saw a show and said, I want to do that? Was it then? Probably. Probably. But, you know, Asian culture. Yeah, over here in Hawaii, he's like, you can't do that. You're, you know, come on. You're going to be a cop like your dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I never thought I'd be, I'd be lucky enough to do what I do. So then when did you start to actually getting involved in theater? 1994, I believe. Uh, it was that long. I mean, that's... Yeah, well, 20 years ago. Yeah, but I mean, that... Uh, a oh, lot of people got involved. I got it involved in way earlier than uh, you did. Yeah, well, it was the height of the karaoke craze uh -huh. here. Or I'm sorry, like karaoke craze. No, karaoke. <laughs> karaoke. <laughs> karaoke <laughs> craze. And all my friends could sing really well, and I couldn't. So I went to a voice teacher, uh, Donnie Lisa Pasquale, and um, she taught me the basics of singing, and she asked me one day, if I wanted to audition for a play that she was in. It was a musical at Diamond Head Theater. And, <laughs> and I told her, wow, just to get an audition, you know, I can die tomorrow. So anyway, so I did the audition and uh, I got into my first play there, which was The Pirates of Penzance. And I was pirate number 11. And uh, <laughs> a 
about 30, I think. <laughs> but it was fun, you know, and it was a great experience. And I remember telling myself, don't forget, you know, when the first time that curtain goes up, you know, nothing will ever be the same. And nothing really? has been the same. Yeah, and I remember that. The curtain's going up, the curtain's going up. And wow, there's an audience out there. You know, that was great. So you felt, yeah, I, I remember that first feeling of knowing the audience was there, but I'm doing everything in my power to ignore them. But they're so there. I mean, you yeah. feel them with every oh, fiber yeah. of your being. You know, and at Diamond Head, you know, the, the audience is like way out there. But at Kubu Kahua, the audience is right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's even scarier. Yeah, sometimes it is. It's, sometimes it's more difficult to act in a smaller room. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Uh, because when you're when you're on a bigger stage in a bigger house, um, I think you have to you, you tend to need to act bigger. So you know you rely on um, you rely you have a safety almost you know between the, the, you and the audience. Uh, at Kumu or, or or in venues that are closer that are smaller, uh, the audience is is. Uh, what is that word? Yeah, they're they're like looking in. Uh, they're I don't want to say yes. It's almost like being a voyeur, mm. and uh, and you as an actor you have to um, uh, av not avoid, but <laughs> you have to pretend that they're not there. Right. Right. And you and and, and in doing so, they become more voyeuristic if you're successful in what you're doing and they forget that this is a play and I think as an audience they feel like they're you're letting them into somebody's life or somebody's situation and I think that's why it's so successful there because it's so close and so small and people identify with that because Kumu is you know mostly local plays or plays done about um, the Pacific Rim, and 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 people just get involved. I, I don't think you, you can stop it. Mm. You know, if you if you do a good job, you know they're there, they're they're right there with you, and and you, you take them for the ride, and bring them back home, and lights up, and you're out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and then they walk away saying, "My life has been changed." Yeah, and then, then they walk away. They go, "Wow, cool. Who would have thought?" So what made you, uh, you started off in Diamond Head doing musicals. You've come, this, working at Kumukuhu Theater is quite different. Yes. How did you, and, and they're just two very different types yeah. of theater. One advances totally life through different. song, totally the, other, <laughs> the other does not. So how did you end up at Kumukuhu? Uh, I had a friend, her name was Sheila Seeley, and she had done some stuff for HTY and at Kumukuhu Theater. And she's a, she was a really good actress. And I was doing all my stuff at Diamond Head, and uh, she told me, oh, you should, you should check it out at Kumu. You're Hawaiian. I was like, what does that mean? And uh, so I went to go see a show at Kumu. I think it was um, A Language of Their Own by Che Yu. And, uh, and it, was, it was a beautiful play. But it, you know, it, was, it was nothing that I knew. You know, I, I, I didn't know how I could just act and not communicate through song uh -huh. and dance and, you know. Because, you know what? You're removing another wall when you right, do that. Right. When you are in song and dance, we know that's not real. Right. You know, I can dance sad. Oh, he's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I can dance happy. Yeah. So you, you remove another wall, uh, another layer between you and the audience. Right. I mean, and it all comes down to... Um, you know, playing uncle and having no, no layer there whatsoever. Right, right. I remember doing a show like that one time, and my uh, another woman I was working with, we had an intermission, and we had to use the same bathroom as the audience. Oh. So there, we're in the bathroom, and someone says something to me, and I'm like, "Dang it! I have to still be in character." You know that. That's that's tough. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough, but it's uh, it's also very challenging. It's very ch it's definitely yeah. very challenging. Do do you have a preference for oh. <laughs> going to the bathroom? No, for 
a, a big saucy musical or an intimate theater in the round? Oh my gosh. You know, there's a time for big saucy musicals and I like doing that. But I also like, I also like intimate theater a lot. And, and Kumu has uh, really been important in um, teaching me to do that or taking me by the hand and, and showing me how it's done. And, and you know, a large part of it, uh, I think, is, is uh, due to Harry Wong. Ah, yes. And Harry is the artistic director at Kumukuhoi Theater. Yes. And he, uh, as a director, he's a teaching director. Yes. And he is also a, um, uh, he, he works with a lot of our playwrights. Right. Also, yeah. Yeah, and uh, most of my plays I've done with Harry. I'd say probably about 97% of the plays I've done at Kumu were all directed by Harry. Oh. Um, Can you hold on for just a second? Sure. We're going to take another break. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll this right is back. Uh, Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. Stay put. Hi, I'm Jay Seidel. I'm host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is our flagship show, which plays 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. And the, uh, the supporters of that show are uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and the Hawaii Energy. And luckily enough, we have representatives of both of them right here today to tell you more about what they think about the show. Uh, Sharon Moriwaki at my left is a co-chair of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and she goes first. Sharon? Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm so glad that we have this Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This was uh, two years ago when we started this, and we have continued it because it's so important, and there's so many developments happening across the state we hope you'll tune in every Wednesday, 4 to 5. It's wonderful. And uh, Ray is uh, Hawaii Energy. Ray, what is your thought about the same subject? Well, I, I agree completely with Sharon uh, that uh, we are talking about every Wednesday, 4 to 5, uh, we talk about some of the most important subjects that uh, are affecting the islands uh, now and into the future. Uh, energy, clean energy, we need it. Uh, we often run into uh, new ideas that we had not uh, thought about before. Uh, we did just today, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we're going to have more of that uh, in the future. So uh, come on down and, uh, and watch us uh, 4 to 5 on Wednesdays, um, and we'll uh, see what happens. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. And I just want to say, if you would ever like to join us in our downtown studio audience, send an email to j at thinktechhawaii.com, and he will hook you up. I am talking with Will Kahele, who is a, a beloved local actor, director, playwright. And if you would like to talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, if you're a little starstruck, you can always just call the Kumukuhua box office and order up some tickets, because <laughs> this is the guy who's going to answer the phone. I'll answer. <laughs> um, so let me ch uh, switch gears here just a little bit again and talk about uh, your painting. When did that come into your life? When did you start doing that? Uh, I would say probably somewhere in the early 90s. So before you got into acting? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. And you, you still do that. Is that, do you feel that that is, um, they're connected somehow, or do you feel like this is? Uh, uh, I guess I have a bigger right brain than I thought. Ah. Yeah. So you need both of those yeah. outlets. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we can we can move forward from there. When did you decide to get into directing? Uh, I don't know. I, I think um, one of the uh, natural courses of being an actor is you when you when you when I went to go see other plays, you know, I'd always be making these mental notes about direction. Uh, lighting, uh, you know, everything, everything about the show that I was seeing. 
and uh, and so I was directing the play in my head. You know, I would have I would have had the actor do this. I would have had the lights here, or you know, whatever. And um, yeah, and I and I knew that if I if I could go to a show and not do any of that, then the production was a success as far as I was concerned, mm. because it was perfect. <laughs> As, I wasn't as, as far those as you notes. were concerned. Yeah, as far as I was concerned, I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, and uh, and I had uh, told Harry Wong, uh, you know, that I was interested in directing if or, you know, and, and Harry let me do assistant directing and he let me do stage managing. So all of that was almost, you know, like a, like a class, you know, in uh, theater and stuff so uh, yes yeah, so I was always interested in that and some of the things that I would think uh, watching Harry direct you know I would never tell him you know my my thoughts but he would just he would just say it I'm like wow I I, <laughs> I that's what I thought you know that so that that's I had so to me I had a good instinct <laughs> you know for for that yeah. and and Harry's and Kumu has helped me to uh, to grow yeah. in that way. Do you feel, well, I, that makes me think that, um, I think that there is a right and a wrong, or there, there are, you know, there's successful and there's unsuccessful when you're portraying a story within a specific style and genre. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to how you are going to get from A to B, there's a lot of different ways right, right. To, to go there. And I think that Harry has a very specific style he has he has a specific toolbox right, right. that he uses, and you you come in and you learn from him. You learn how to handle those tools, let's right, say, right. but you bring your own sensibilities to right. it. Also. And and eventually, I, I think I I'm, I'm going to have my own toolbox, right. you know, and I'm going to have I'm going to have the tools that you know Harry's bought me, but I'm also going to have tools that I'm going to buy from other places, you know, that I'm going to put in that toolbox, yeah. and and I can go out and use those, you know. Um, why, why do you want to be involved in theater? Why do I want to be involved why, in theater? Why do this? This is your Barbara Walters moment, <laughs> isn't it? You're going to make me cry. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, that is oh, that, not oh, good I enough. I just went an uh, octave up. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. Um, I, this, this venue, uh, this, this theatrical art is something I can do well, you know. I mean, not to be big-headed or, or, or boastful. It's okay, you do it but, very um, well. Um, my uh, being raised uh, the way I was, you know, I was always told I, I couldn't do anything. I'd never amount to anything, I, you know, uh, unless... You know, but I was never given any direction. Like, how am I going to get there? So, um, you know, I didn't really have a good, uh, a, a good outlook on where I was going to go. And so, and I think movies and musicals and all that stuff, those were escapes for me that I could get out of reality and, you know, and live. So when I got to do it for real on stage, and and I told, and I told myself. You know, the only way you're going to get better is if you study those people that you love, that you like watching, and see how they do it, and somehow learn the craft. That's the only way you can get better. And so, and so that's what I did. And and I had people, and I had friends, and I had patrons. You know, always you know thank me or you know tell me that I, you know how good I was. And you know, you, being. Asian again, you know, you tell yourself, oh, no, 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 you know, I, I, how, nah, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, you know, that, <laughs> you know. But then after a while, you know, you, you, I had a good friend, Moses Goods, and he sat me down and he said, Will, he said, you are good. He said, you have to take it and carry it and, you know, trust it. So, so I do. Glad you do. <laughs> Thank you, That's Barbara. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, 
when you let's let's look at this from an actor's perspective. Let's let's talk about your process a little bit. You get a hold of that script. Mm -hmm. Let's just jump to that point. You've got the script. You've got the role. And now, what are you going to do personally? Um, what do I do? I I trust in my director. Uh, I look into the character and try to try to see where how the character lives, uh, what he's facing in this situation, uh, where he's starting from and where he wants to go. And you, you know you just try to look at all uh, the different aspects of uh, that play. And even like in the other characters, how the other characters relate to him. You know, what are their stories? What's his backstory? Sometimes I'll just make up a backstory just to, you know, justify where that character is. That's interesting. Even when you don't feel like the playwright is giving you anything there? I've never had that happen to me yet. Um, so you're making up a story that fits, yeah, that fits that in fits, with something right, that the playwright... Right. Okay, I see what um, you're saying. I, I think the only, I've never had the, the playwright uh, film me. I've had directors film me, but I think that was, you know, I think partly I had to take on the responsibility because I should have been able to say, hey, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going, man. You got to save me. Where am I going? Where's this character going? You know, so, so it's part of the responsibility of the actor to not just, you know, sit back. You know, if they don't feel that they're being guided correctly, they need to go to uh, their director and say, I need help because I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. I'm just having a terrible <laughs> flashback of a time I was working in. Uh, it was the first time I had worked in a professional theater in a long time. I'd uh -huh. taken a break. And it was a, it was a rough time. It was right after 9-11, and I had had some family tragedies at that time. But I was there working on this role. and. It was so near 9-11 that the star of our show couldn't be there because he was in New York and he wasn't able to fly. He, you know, we had to run our rehearsals without him. Anyway, I, had, I was given a direction to the line said leave and the director had me stay. And I said, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand why I'm, say, why I'm staying. And she said, how much education and experience do you have and you can't figure out how to make yourself stay, you know, find your own motivation to stay. And I thought, oh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to come back into this world. There are, there are directors who do that and you say, okay, <laughs> I'm yeah, going to yeah. have to figure it out. Most directors do not do that. And there are an awful lot of actors, as directors we know, there are an awful lot of actors who should be asking those questions and should be open to the answers to those questions and don't even realize that they have them. Right. Uh, a while back, you know, when I was first learning the craft and stuff, you know, I was one of those actors where uh, I needed direction, you know, so, you know, where do I go now? What do I do now? Who do I look at? You know, and stuff. And then after a while, you don't get those uh, cues anymore. You know, the director doesn't give you those anymore. And you go, I wonder why he's not giving me any notes. You go, because you don't need them. Because you do you know, it. Yeah. Unless you, you get notes when you do something stupid or when, you do, when you're doing something bad, but you're, you're already gaining an instinct. So do what you think you know, you're supposed to do. If somebody's walking towards you, don't just stand there. Get out of the way. <laughs> you know, yeah. What you didn't directly do, get out of the way. Counter. Yeah. What would you, we just have a couple more minutes here. Wow, that went by so fast. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. <laughs> what you haven't said, what I love to hear my guests say is, wow, that's a good question. So let me ask it. If you could not be involved in theater, what would you do? Oh, that's a good question. Thanks. Um, okay, and we're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Suri just took us out. Briefly, answer the question. Uh, I would want to be a uh, high school counselor. Really? Yeah. That's sweet. Why? I because I was such a, a dumb kid when I was in high school that I would want somebody to, you know, guide me and move me forward. Uh. And so after I left high school, I figured it out. Like, oh, you know, 
why was I such an idiot? It was so easy. Because <laughs> you didn't know. Because I didn't know. And now you do. But I, I did have a really good counselor in high school, and she made me graduate on time and stuff. And, and I think maybe that was part of it. Mrs. Lopez. Awesome. Kudos, Mrs. Lopez. Kaneki High School. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of floored. I, I wouldn't have expected that. I always expect uh, someone who's involved in theater to say philosopher or psychologist. Oh, there was one or, time where I wanted to be um, uh, a priest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I it's again, I had the you know what? It's the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's a support a, 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 in a position of support. As a director, you're in a position of support also. As an actor, you are supporting the other actors on the stage with you, but it's that's kind of a different thing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's where that uh, uh, that Asianness of, of you comes out and right. says no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, because you know, if we said yeah, we get slapped in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. For being well, you're here. Welcome. This is just part one. We'll have you it was back. Part, oh, it was a great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta go. Uh, I would like to thank a few people other than just Will Kahele. I would like to thank you for being here. I would like to thank our floor manager, uh, Sachi Sloma. I <laughs> would like to thank our um, production manager, Zuri Bender, who Yay. is in my ear. And I would like to thank Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. All together. Come back next week and see us again. Bye. Bye.